Thank you. I'm sorry it took us a session to get up through. This is quite an event to have this many people who are here. So I'm, I'm Jennifer Silverberg, I'm CEO of Smart Commerce. I'm super excited to be able to speak with Allison today. Um, as I was thinking about it when we were standing in the back of the room, um, it occurred to me that with her being from Visa, that there's probably not another brand here that at least 90% of us have stuck to our bodies right now. So, right? Somebody's got it in their pocket or their purse or their whatever. So this is kind of universally interesting. So thank you. Or on your smartphone. Or on your smartphone. smartphone. That's right. But it's still a part of your body, right? It's, you keep your skin on the wall some more. It's a lot. It's a lot. Right. Right. So you don't even have a card. Oh, my God. I'm so old. I'm still thinking hard. So, first of all, can you give us a little sense of who you are, how you got to where you are, and what you do now? So, I live here in Austin, um, and I've been at Visa for two and a half years. Um, I'm actually in the part of Visa that is on the B2B side, which Jennifer and I were talking earlier, it's not actually that different from B2C. And I actually came out to Austin because Dell Technologies had recruited me to head their social business at the time. So now at Visa, I love it. I had all brand and digital for uh, CyberSource and Operates.net, which are their B2B engines. Cool. So just kind of, everybody had these funny icebreakers, mine's not so funny, but I would love to know you personally, how has have your consumption patterns and your shopping patterns changed over the last two and a half years? Okay, so up until a business trip in November, I realized in my closet that the only clothing purchases I had made were what I call fancy joggers or fancy sweatpants. So that when my neighbor came over and I answered the door because I've been working from home for two years, it was less embarrassing. I don't really wear them to the store, but they make me feel like I'm working and it's less sad. I actually had them back in the office for the last gosh, since June, but I'm like the only one there that's optional to be, so they've been so conservative with COVID, but literally it was embarrassing. I looked at it and was like, joggers, joggers, cut off shorts. Yep, and I wear working stuff, so I mean, it's all very casual, very, very Austin. That's cool. What about the other kind of purchases that you made? Because I know we've had a lot of shifts in consumer behavior, which I'm going to ask about myself, but for you personally, um, so DoorDash was just here. And I am a customer of DoorDash. Probably spent way too much money on ordering food. Um, but with COVID hit, I mean, our buying behaviors didn't change so much. And in my family, we've definitely been very conservative the entire time. My parents live nearby, they're older. So we wanted to just be as secure as possible. So we were Target is a great example. Um, you know, you order and you go, drive there. You give them a code, they know you're there, and you don't even know, you don't even put your window down. They just look at the code, they're like, got it, you pop open your trunk. I don't have to step out of my car, which is amazing, and I have kids, so I don't want to get out of the car. So my buying uh, patterns have changed in that. I've done a lot more uh, buy now, pick up later, ordering, you know, curbside, which actually we, we do power all that kind of stuff. Um, and I have done a lot of DoorDash and their competitor ordering uh, food to my house, which I probably don't want to use any type of like, I, I do use mint for what we'll call veggie and they're really just looking at where my money's going. And my restaurant bill, uh, that one wasn't me. Thank you. But yeah, that, that's been in like maybe a here and before it was probably like down here. So, but you see this not only on your personal level, but also on the corporate level. Wow. Now I am going to have to sit down. Just me. Oh, good. Thank you. Um, so anyway, you see, you see changes in behavior personally, which you just talked about, but on the corporate level, what are you guys seeing? How does this look when you look at the whole entirety of everything? I know this is a big question. I learned so much about payments when I came to Visa that I never thought about. You know, like you swipe your card, you tap your card, you 
use Apple Pay, whatever you happen to do, and you just don't think about it. And magically, you know, you're, you're, um, you swipe it at the, the business, and they somehow know that you have enough money to cover it within like a second or two. Like, think about that insane path that has to go between the person who's selling something to, we use a lot of funny words that I had to learn, like issuing bank, acquiring bank. Visa is not a credit card company. We're a network of networks who power the payments, but we're not actually a credit card company. Your bank is the issuer. They're the one giving you a credit card. It has to travel between the seller, the person selling something, has to travel from the bank, your business bank, and the person, um, the, the customer's bank. It all has to go back and forth and returns to you in like a second or two. That's crazy. For it to say, yep, we got, got the money, and later today when we settle the payment, it's gonna magically transfer to the person who just sold you something. So, um, the way that I explain in the most easy to understand way of what we actually do within my part of the business is we help businesses accept payments and we help provide, uh, prevent fraud. Things like card testing, or another thing I learned about which was loyalty fraud where they steal your airline uh, airline points or something like that i never would have thought about that um but i was telling jennifer a big change which again like us normal people would never think about was the buying behaviors that changed and so companies are trying to prevent fraud and they watch buying behaviors and they train these rule engines to say like oh this is a normal you know behavior it's fine let it pass through oh this looks a little fishy make them give additional uh, information like a pin or something like that to make sure it's legitimate. So airlines got hit really hard by COVID. Buying behaviors changed a lot and all of a sudden people were buying a lot of one-way tickets to go home. So a lot of companies had to very quickly pivot and reprogram these rule engines to say, no, no, that's not fraud. Our new normal is, I hate that term, it's not what it was before. So instead of pissing people off and having everybody's you know transactions get rejected we had to rethink and help these businesses retrain what fraud looked like because it changed a lot are there any specific other than the one-way tickets are there any other things that you guys saw a lot more of that previously have been considered unusual um i think a different one instead of fraud is just what i was referencing in my personal behavior so all of a sudden, the way we shopped looked different. You know, we were already headed in a digital manner. We still like physical shopping. Um, but buy now, pick up later, or buy now, and curbside, um, all these different things accelerated because of COVID. I think I ordered a couple of times to pick up groceries before that, and all of a sudden, we were all ordering our groceries all the time and either having them be delivered or we were going to pick them up. So... You have that in terms of they were adding, you don't think about it, but you're having to actually connect systems that are digital and in-store. And those systems historically have not always been the same. You had to start thinking about when you're, I do this, when I go to the store, a lot of times I actually go on my phone to see, oh wait, do they have this and where is the aisle? Like, how do I find the thing? Maybe it's the introvert. I don't know what it is, but I'm like, I don't want to ask somebody. I don't want to find somebody. I just want to look it up or I want to compare or whatever that is. So our buying behaviors of using digital and physical at the same time changed. Um, and another one was so many businesses had to go digital. So you have local businesses we love supporting and they weren't really digital. They didn't have a way to accept payments and suddenly they needed to be able to activate so they didn't lose their businesses. To accept payments and with our solution you don't even need a website i mean it's crazy like you can click a, click a link you don't need a website and you can pay so businesses had to rethink very quickly if they wanted to stay in business i can't even imagine how much ch that change on the outside impacted your need to change on the inside really rapidly and and i'm guessing you were all working remote for the first time in a long time. How did the company help manage that? Were there any great things you saw that they did that made it possible or that you did with your team? From an employee experience. Mm -hmm. uh, like I mentioned, Visa, one of the best companies I've ever worked for, Al Kelly, he made sure at every step we were cared for. So we was actually booking an international trip when we were told, halt all travel, cancel all travel, we're not going anywhere. And this was beginning of March. And I was in Washington at the time with my one of part of my team were distributed. 
and that was my last trip. It was end of February and we were all grounded and they did a phased approach and they changed things so we could access things that previously would have been hard to access and now we could do it from home. You know, we went on this thing I loved. Um, at first they were like, everybody, we want cameras on, cameras on. For those of us that have lived this for the last few years, cameras on gets old and exhausting if you're in meetings all day because what's different about being in room versus being on camera is that in a room we're not always looking at the person. So even if somebody's not looking at you, you don't know. So you feel like you're being stared at for like 10, eight, 10 hours, whatever your meeting schedule is. Probably most are not as bad as mine. Um, that's exhausting. And if you're an introvert, which I actually am, weirdly so, like you're really at the end of the day so just burnt out. So we saw that the first people they were trying to maintain is the next show that you could only go And they realized we were getting this just on now. So they said, you know what? You guys do what you need to go camera on. Like whatever is right for you for you that day, you do it. And they've continued to think constantly about what you need. I think um and turbulence in so many different ways. And we're like, hey, we're here. We know what's happening in the world, and we're going to protect you. And we're not going to put you in front of So they didn't need to explain. I, I actually have an office chair at my house because they went that far. Like, hey, if you need an office chair, like we will put your name on it and you can take it. So like they went all out. No, I love that. Mm -hmm. They do some things. I think all right. Very strong. But let's go back to the, the ships. What are you, what is shopping? What What is these like shopping is going to look like in the love of God? What is it going to look like in 2030? That sounds so different. I don't know if I'm that far ahead. Um, it's going to be very different. Becoming more seamless. We just did a proprietary proprietary research study where we did what shopping behaviors look like and what consumers want and what uh, sellers think they want, which there is a disconnect, so that's hopefully we don't go over. And my investment in our clients, it's really important to see customers. Something that we just launched, I think it's really interesting, that would be attraction and more things. If you live in an urban area, you take subway in the example, it can be really annoying to go buy tickets. We just launched it in a few places and you literally just like type the card walk in. There's no ticket, there's no nothing. You just walk through. It's easy peasy. Um here's the thing I love the tactic part. Somehow like it used to be like, oh, this is but it's interesting and that tap to pay when I was in London, like it's all tap to pay and I love it. It's contactless, contactless is such a thing now. Um I end up that I can share my phone. And I personally have Apple Pay, which I also will say previous working in a meeting, I was like, oh gosh, security, I don't know what I think. But genuinely, I'm like, oh, and I'm really digital, so I have, I know this data in the past. Um, I think it'd be more contactless. I think it's all about how you can be made the experience. I don't think we're going to end up with chips in our body. Um, we talked a little bit about the metaverse. Yeah, honestly, I don't know what I think about that. Um, my friends who were who there, like that one's still like my brain can't quite wrap that far. Um, but I think payments will be contactless. I think they'll be remove frictions. We want things to be easy. We have different expectations than they used to be. So I'm like, for now, I love just walking through a turnstile. I don't have to go to the ticket uh, ticket booth and wait in line. That's interesting. What what I'm hearing is instead of going from the technology outward. You're going from the consumer outward, and that sounds like it's a, a really interesting thing for a company to do. Because you hear people who go, which I should ask you about that, or or metaverse, or micropayments. But if it's not something that the consumer wants to embrace, you're going to try to shut it down. But okay, is that? Yeah, actually, there have been announcements from Visa around crypto, so certainly we're always looking at like what's happening out there, and we do have to vet what we think is real and what's not real. Uh, we were talking earlier about voice of customer. I think sometimes companies get ahead of themselves, and your product managers, your developers are like, you know it'd be cool? That should, that should be, out, that should be outlawed like, in product meetings. Nobody should be able to say that. You know it would be cool? And I don't, I don't want to be like, Put people in in um, 
boxes, but sometimes the people who like think something would be cool don't talk to other people. Um, and so like you end up with things that like sound cool or like they think would work well, but nobody wants it. It's not something you can monetize or make money off of. So like you're like, yeah, that would be cool. How are you gonna make money with it? And it's like, oh, can you help me market it internally? And then maybe everybody will buy in and we'll sell it. And you're like, oh. Or we could just talk to our customers and see what's painful for them. What do they think would be cool? Because we have so many people in the world, there's great ideas. If we just listen, we can develop something that's better. So you use the word frictionless and you talked about this quick tap payment and disappearing inside of Apple. When you're frictionless, you tend to disappear. You tend to not feel as present to the consumer. In that space, how do you market something that the consumer wants to just work or just be there? How, how do you do that? That sounds like one of the coolest challenges. I think that it's a mix of you have to show up as a brand and some scenarios, the people you work with, they want everybody to know they're working with you, like everybody. And other times they want to sell your solution and they don't want people to know that it's your solution. There's different ways to market, but I do think brand experience is critical for people to have that trust, that affinity, that I know what they I know what they do. So like now I know Apple, Visa, I will tell you working for Visa, you should feel so solid about your security, like so solid. I, I worked for Dell before and I'm like, oh no, they don't hold a candle to Visa. Um, but yeah, I just think that there are ways to be frictionless, but still be known and still be trusted and have those brand attributes that consumers value and connect with. You know, like I'll give this quick example. I went from more B2C world to B2B in, in Dell. You know, like they sell computers, but all their money comes from the B2B side. So I had to kind of like, I came in and then I had a panicky moment of, oh my gosh, this is B2B. What am I going to do? Can I do it? And then I realized it's literally all the same. Um, and I, you know, it's just in the B2B cycles, it's like 12 to 18 months, or it just depends. It could be a hundred million dollar deal. Well, all of a sudden you're not just competing off a of product and solution. You're competing off of what's your company value. Does this company want to put their name next to yours? And that can be things like social, uh, corporate social responsibility. It can be Diversity, equity, and inclusion, those things are already critical, period, but they also become critical to who wants to do business with you if you have the right values or not. Wow. So Visa as a brand, if you were going to define it to us as your potential partners, what are the most important pillars to you? You, you mentioned a rebranding or a re-something. Yeah. Um, we have both within my area of the business, we went through a brand refresh. I totally overhauled it when I came in. I call it, um, we went from mom jeans before mom jeans were cool again. That's where, that's where I started when I came in to now it's very modern, very fresh, very competitive with um, like the stripes and the squares and some of those guys in the world. Visa, we also just completed a brand refresh and you have to be so thoughtful when you do it because everybody knows Visa. And we all know when there's been those brand refreshes in the world where like when Airbnb refreshed a few years ago and we're all like, oh my gosh, we hate the logo, it's so terrible. And then we all forgot that we hated the logo. Like all those things have to be so thoughtful. Um, and again, vetted, like people who aren't marketers were like, oh my gosh, you just chose a color, it was no big deal. And yet there's psychology behind colors, there's so many pieces. So. We have gone through a couple brand refreshes. It's honestly really fun, um, but there is also so much science behind the fun. So you mentioned, sorry, so you mentioned a few minutes earlier about um, diversity and inclusion. I know that you're involved in some of those initiatives inside of ESA. Can you tell, we, we had some somebody here earlier from the female founders and we heard a lot about um, women and, and are shifting roles in business. As a woman who's in charge of all of that, can you tell me a little bit about what Visa's commitment is to that and, and what you personally are seeking to change? So Visa is passionate about diversity, equity, inclusion. I'm actually, something we did um, when Black Lives Matter really, I think, came at the forefront a couple years ago, Visa made, this is where I pay attention to companies. Everybody talks about things. Do they put money against it? Do they put dates against it? I don't believe them if they're like, oh my gosh, this is so important. 
and it sounds like a PR soundbite, like, cool, I don't really believe you. Visa actually made commitments, they put money, they changed the way they do things. They actually started something called a Black Scholars Program. We kicked it off in uh, September, and what they did was they selected 50 people at Visa to be mentors. And based off of backgrounds, um, you know, like we, like I applied, I applied and was like, I would so love to do this. I would so love to use any inkling of power that I have to help. And I would also love to better understand because I only know my experience as a white woman, as a heterosexual white woman. Like I only know that experience. I can't speak for anybody else in the room. Um, and so I actually was fortunately chosen. So I was really excited. And you get matched with um, somebody who's a young college student they have an opportunity to become an intern in Visa and to be offered a job at the end of the road. So it's those types of things that I love and I uh, am so grateful for that they're all our monetary commitments. And then from a B2B standpoint, the way that we, um, again, I believe when you're a big company, we have accountability in changing the world and the way things are done. And so our focus is on increasing diversity accessibility and inclusion in the digital economy regardless of whether you're Indonesia you're in Indonesia you've got a food cart you should be able to access the digital economy it doesn't matter how much money you have or where you are you should be able to tap in because that tapping into commerce is what changes the game and where we're at level wise so when you think about because I saw you kind of light up when I asked this thing about diversity what are you particularly proud of that your company has done? I mean, is there a story is always easier to remember, you know, than, than the words. Can you think of anything that, that Visa has done that you just, you wish everybody knew because then we would love it as much as you do? I'm actually going to give a non-Visa example. Um, when I interview people, I love to ask, what's your proudest moment in your career? And I'm like, don't get freaked out by the question. It doesn't have to be a big thing, but just what are you proud of? And my example is a few companies ago, I was pregnant and I knew from my previous pregnancy that I needed accommodations. I needed parking close to my building, which was just where it started. And so I told HR at eight weeks pregnant that I needed parking in the building that I, they owned. Um, my, they knew I was pregnant before my mom knew I was pregnant. I could not get like technically approved parking in my building until I was 27 weeks pregnant and had just been put on some medications and modified bed rest. Like, and they just, it was, I had to get a handicap placard. I had to do all these things because it was a gray area. And this is why I say our experiences are unique, um, but not always. And my experience was I couldn't get parking. And that's where some of my journey began in a larger project with this company of like, they didn't have paid maternity leave, and yet their company was all about families. It was all about this, you know, so how do we talk about supporting families, but you can't give a pregnant woman parking in the building you own, there's no paid uh, parental leave, there's not flex work, and it started a huge project where I, you know, basically brought a lot of voices of women together of experience they've had, some going back to work two weeks after popping out a kid, like, you're a hot mess. It is. You are sleep deprived, they're all the things. You don't fit into your clothes. But they needed to come back because they couldn't eat. They weren't gonna pay the bills if they didn't come back. So brought women's voices together, put together a business case. That company now has paid parental leave. They have parking, they have all sorts of things. And that is my proudest career, I <laughs> thank you. And by the way, it wasn't just me, there were so many women. Um, and I, so I am religious. And you know, it was something that I did pray about and somebody came forward and said, I would love to help. And they were exactly the person I needed. They were an editor, a professional editor, and they helped pull this together. We printed, we bound it. I mean, it was literally this miraculous thing that happened. And I just, it, like literally the proudest moment of my career. And now women don't even know at that company that that didn't used to be in existence. They just get to enjoy it. And I love that. That's, that's amazing, by the way, I'm like, getting like wow um so and then i know they keep telling us we got to sort of get to wrap up so that you have you can have a chance to ask questions but you know this this uh this show south by southwest is all about innovation and new thinking and this kind of thing and i don't think any companies anymore innovate in a vacuum they in innovate as part of a community i'm guessing because you know a lot of times people come to these speaking things because they want to learn more about potentially partnering with you 
if somebody here wanted to be in touch with Visa, is, what is the best way? What, what advice can you give them about the direction, um, well, finding somebody to speak with, and then um, what should they have put together before they come to talk to you? I will give the answer that is always tough when you're a really big company. They're like, oh, can you help me with this? And I'm like, I have no idea who that person is, so I would love to help you, but like, it will almost be, I will not be helpful. Um, in terms of partners, I think it's great to, first of all, know what you're trying to accomplish, put a business case together. I got my MBA, it was so unexpected, it was not planning to go back to school. I can't say that my undergrad GPA was super strong. I'm like, high school, awesome, got into college, I'm like, I'm good. Um, but it taught me how to put a business case together, which is honestly a lot of times how you get things done. So I would suggest to people to really think through it, think about the need, think about the data behind it. It's how I got that uh, paper rental leave approved. I put all the data behind it. I put all the like, here's why you should do it. And by the way, they're gonna set the standard within that area. Um, and it's hard to say no when it's a very logical business case. So I would say put your business case together, LinkedIn is such a great tool. Um, I definitely use it a lot. It's how when I have interviewed at companies when I've been recruited, I 100% digitally stock who I'm gonna interview with. So I know where our connection points are, what's of interest to them. Um, if you do reach out via LinkedIn, never immediately pitch somebody. I get so many LinkedIn requests and if you pitch me right off the bat, I'm like, well that was a waste of both of our time because you didn't even get to take the time to get to know me. So put your business tastes together, research who that you think the right people are, job titles, you know, it's marketing, right? You're looking at targeting to find the right place and pay attention to what the business is trying to achieve. Do your homework, I think is what you're saying. All right, I was told two minutes ago that we have two minutes, so I'm guessing we have one minute for a question. One audience question, I'm sorry, I, I talked. And made Sorry, answer guys. questions. Anybody? Anybody have any any questions? Going once? She's she's gonna she's gonna sing if you don't have any questions. Hello, hello. So we talk about the future a little. So where do you see challenges in becoming a contactless payment world? I think that contactless has been driven and accelerated because of COVID. I don't think that we're ever going to get away from a physical shopping experience. Because, and that's actually the research we just did. What came back? So we still come back with anything Gen Z they want. They want that experience. I'm, I'm like a Gen X millennial. I'm somewhere in there. Um, it depends on what I want to claim that day. I do remember the day of the AOL well, my dad. I'm not posting that. I don't pay for it. That's how people are going to be able to use it. You know? Yeah. I'm like, I can tell ages. Um, but I, I think that uh, in shopping experience, we're not going away. Like, it's just how do we make it easy? But we still need to find a job that we understand how do they demonstrate their power the best? How do they make it as easy as possible? How do you go over the job? Like, you're there, I look up and like, oh, so I mail something and send something and talk them. Like, I get out of there. I think there's that finding that right balance. It's not like this and physical to make the shopping experience more.